Only God knows your future. And so we, 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 we have to walk by faith knowing that he does all things well. And, and sometimes you want to shake your fist at him and say, why have I lost a little loved one? When I say little, a child or, 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 or a niece or, or a relative or a close friend. Why, why losing? What's going to make, make me better because I've lost something so dear to my heart? When God does something, he does not seek man's counsel. He doesn't need your permission. He doesn't need the President of the United States' permission. The Bible tells us, Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, that he works all things out after the counsel of, I feel the Holy Ghost right now, after the counsel of his own will. I don't know what I'm going to lose tomorrow. And, and I pray to God it's not a child, a, a spouse. I, I pray to God that it's not my home. But, 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 but if it is, I have to learn to trust God that right in the midst of that, I know that it has, be, has to be God's perfect will. If I love him, then he'll say, listen, I'll give you the strength to endure and go through it. Because if you just hang on, there's something greater down the road for you and sometimes we want to think it's monetarial things but but it's not it's the anointing sometimes you've got to lose the materialistic things in order to receive the anointing that God has for your life losing a friendship is worth losing if you're going to get the anointing that God has for you to endure the calling that God has for you some things is worth losing in order to receive what God has in, in store, in store, in store for you. No one likes to lose. And so, the Word of God tells us, and I know this could be taken a totally different direction, the context of this, the Lord said, and I will restore to you the years. <sighs> Not the lions have devoured. Or the elephants have trampled underfoot. Or the horses have just kicked and beaten and, and, and just damaged things. No, he talked about some little insects. He talked about the locusts. Talked about the canker worm. The palmer worm and the caterpillar. Something so small hath eaten. Because it's the little things in life from growing up in elementary school, then middle school, then high school, and college, and just life in general... All of a sudden, you wake up one day and these little things that's happened to you as far as rejections and things, it all comes flooding back to your mind. And now you think you've lost everything, so you tend to grab the towel that you have and you just throw it in and say, I'm tired of losing. I'm done. And God is telling you, just hang on because there's something greater in store for your life. And when God restores something... The word restore is to bring it back to its original state. And so when he restores something, you can't find a scratch on it. He brings it back to, this, to the original. Listen, his church does not have any blemishes about it. There might be some imperfect people in the church, but the body of Christ is perfect. It's perfected because we've lost some things in life. But look where we are today, July the 6th, 2022. Look where you're sitting today. You're healthy to come to church. Your vision is good. Avery, every elder's with us today, a newborn baby. God's been good to us. Yes, some of you might have lost some things yesterday and in the past. But God said, if you just hang on, I'm going to restore the years that these little insects have eaten and, and, tore, and, and just tore away from you. It's tough to lose. Because it's not about even the loss. Because you have to be in competition with someone in order to lose. Oh my. Oh my, this is good. Thank you, Lord. You have to be in competition with someone. When we go to checkers, or go to checkers, when we go to Cracker Barrel, we eat checkers. I mean, I don't have checkers on the mind. It's either that or Cracker Barrel. I'm going to go with the second option here. But they have checker boards. They have the little, the little triangle T things, and 
It's always a competition with family. Before we even walk in the door, it's Preston. It used to be Donovan, but he grew up. And so now it's basketball. And, and, and I just can barely beat him now in basketball. It's on a little tight skull. But anyways, forgetting those things which are behind. <laughs> I was young, now I'm old. And so it's right before we went in, it's, hey, Dan, let's play a game of checkers. I said, okay. I said, what are we playing for? I don't just play games just to play games. There has to be some kind of consequences to the loser, and there has to be a prize to the winner. It, 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 can I, uh, c- come on. It, it, the, the, <laughs> I like that. You don't want to just play a game just to play a game. There has to be some kind of consequence. And you have to discuss those consequences beforehand. And in order to play again with the group of people, whoever you're playing with, you better follow through with a consequence. <laughs> there are some folk in this building right now, they know where I'm going with this. Because there's some that don't like to lose, and so they, that means they don't want to do the consequence. And if it's a group game and they lose with the group, you know, it's like, it's not my fault that I lost. It's their fault. They made a wrong move in the game. And so you begin to, to point fingers. Of the, 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 it's called the blame game. Just do your consequence and get it over with. Now, in our family, we're crazy. So if you lose, you either, help me. Is it a locust? Chocolate-covered locust? Grasshopper? Ants? Grasshoppers? What is it? Minnows? Sardines? Huh? Dog food? Somebody said, your family's nuts. Yes, we are. So if you hear us growl every once in a while, you understand why, because some of it's lost. And I won't tell you those that have had to, literally, they had to, since they lost, they had to get down and lap water out of a dog, dog bowl and, and, and eat dog food. This is, this is the truth. We're, I mean, we're just nuts. What it does, it, it really just, <laughs> it, it builds character, but not just that, but it does something to you. It makes you want to play even better the next go around because they always come back to the table because you might have beaten me once, but I'm coming back again. Vengeance. No one likes to lose. How many's lost in something in life, but then you try it again? And you try it again. Come on now. Every human being has a win and loss column. Hang on now. I'm going to go somewhere with this. Every human being has a win and loss column. In my column, sorry for the personal reference, I have more wins than losses. Because sometimes God will let you lose once, but you'll win four more times after that. I'm not talking, this is not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. You've got to keep going back to it again. It's like the lady with the unjust judge. She might have lost the first day because the judge didn't answer. But nothing kept her from going back and knocking on it. Mike, I I feel the Holy Ghost. You should see my notes. You wouldn't even even be. You think, why? How in the world are you going there? There's a reason for it. Because God wants to know if you're willing to persevere even through your losses of life. Even though the canker worm and the pommel worm, these insects have eaten some things up. He said, if you just hold on to my word, he said, I will restore the years. That means he's going to bring everything back to its original state. What that means is this. You won't be ever called a loser. You'll always be called a winner in his eyes because he said, I'm going to restore everything. The wind column is going to grow or the loser column is going to completely delete and and be obsolete. But you'll learn the lesson through life uh, that if you just hang on a little bit. uh, Listen, winnings are exciting and losing is terrible, but not in the spiritual sense. Sometimes you've got to lose to win. I've never seen a coach or player. Coach going to say, guys, you did great today. You lost. Give yourself a pat on the back. You lost. We're going out for pizza tonight, and I'm buying because you lost. You see grown men weep and cry that they've lost a finals game because they've worked so hard. That's just temporary. I come 
this evening with the word, for, the word from the Lord for someone, you, you're just tired of losing. But just hang on because the word of God says, I'm going to restore. And when God said he's going to restore, look out. There's not one person that can stop you from being restored. Restoration process of God, you man cannot stop it. Only God can proceed and only God can finish it. But he's willing if you're, he's wondering if you're willing to endure the losing process. In the physical sense, if we want to win in life, we must do something. We must de decrease so he can Increase, Paul said, when I am weak, he is, when I'm weak, he is strong. Was David, did he not pin the words, who is this that come from Edom with dyed gar garments from Basra? It's the one that's strong, and mighty in battle, and, and that's the whole thing. Sometimes we think that God don't understand our lo the losing process. If anyone understands the losing process, Jesus Christ understands it. He came to his own, his own received and rejected him. He lost his family, his friends. He lost, he was by himself when they took him out of the garden. And there he was in Pilate Judgment Hall. And he'd done that for you. It looked like he was losing, but, but hang on. He said, destroy this temple. And three days, I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to come back to life. Did he not do that? Yes. That's the same words that was used in Joel. He said, I'm going to restore. It wasn't just for his restoration, but it was for yours and I's as well. Give God a hand clap of praise. Glory. No one likes to lose. I don't like to lose a fishing lure. I don't like to lose a fishing lure. We'll do it whatever we can. Sometimes we use them. Brother McWhorter might understand this. Brother Knox does for sure. We use crankbaits. We cast them, we crank them. If we catch a fish, sometimes it might not be tied right. There might be a flaw in the line and you lose the bait. And so we tend to just kind of look over the water to see if it's bobbing, if it's floating somewhere. We'll go retrieve it. Just a little bitty bait. Just Why would you want to do that? Because I don't want to lose. I've shared this illustration before but when I went to Brother Hall I went to Decatur Central High School and in middle school I met this 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 boy called his name was Ronnie Eastus he was he was a short guy some of you get that in a little bit <laughs> we never seen eye to eye but anyways he was built ripped he looked like a John Cena do you know who John Cena is I know him a little bit you know I trained him just kidding <laughs> he was ripped brother Donovan Ronnie Eastus and he's someone said they contacted him because they told him a few years ago that I talked about him at church and he just started laughing I would meet him every day at the lunch table we'd arm wrestle and forgive me, but I don't like to compete unless there's something involved. So we would arm wrestle for lunch money. And I lost a lot of money. He beat me every time. We'd get there. And all, they, they'd be waiting for us. They'd have the chairs all set out, ready to go. And the principal, um, Mr. Burris, he would, he'd be there too. He didn't know that there was money involved, thank God. But we, we'd meet there and we'd arm wrestle. He beat me. And I'd go home. And of course, I'd pat him on the back. Good job, Ronnie. I'd go home and I'd get a dumbbell. I'd, you know, work out like this, you know, like trying to build my shoulder muscles up so I could whip him. I, I didn't want to just beat him. I wanted to slam his arm so hard, like the cartoons that he'd done, like three or four somersaults, you know, through the cafeteria to Cater Central High School. I never beat Ronnie Isis in arm wrestling. If he was to walk in here today, you'd have to excuse me. I would literally have someone get a table, and I would, it's been years, but I think I could take him now. And it won't be, it won't be for $1.25, Brother Lane. 
bring in the big bucks. Leave your American Express on the table, Ronnie, and I'll leave my wife's credit card on the table, and we'll, we'll just go have it. Mine's all maxed out. But anyways, I never liked to lose, so I kept trying to beat Ronnie. Does it make me a loser today? No. Why? Because I kept trying. 30 years, I almost told my age, 30 years ago, I was scrawny, but I felt like I was strong. Today, I feel like I could really beat him. And if he knew that I would, would arm wrestle him right now, there's a good chance he might let me win. Ah, just go ahead and give it to him. I beat him on how many times? Let's just go ahead and just give it to him. I, I don't know what he would do. Am I a loser? No, I kept trying. It's, it's about the perspective that we, we see. Let me, let me just tell you this here. The adversary will tell you that you're a loser, that you've lost. Stop going to church. Throw in the towel. Your marriage isn't going to work. Your relationship isn't going to work. You have failed God several times. Just, just, just stop and, and just be, be done with it. But then you have someone in your corner, Jesus Christ, saying, listen, if you could just hold on. Because if you lose your life, did not Jesus say, if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it one day. And it won't be, it won't be where you're lame and you're a loser. No, you'll be found eternally. People might think that we're losing today. We're not. We're winning. It's, it's about the perspective. See, we, we think because we see with our natural eyes that we're losing. God has a different perspective. He's up there. We're down here. He sees tomorrow. We can't see tomorrow. The only thing we can see is our past. And, and our past says that we're, that we're losing. The, 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 the statistics tells us that, that we're going to lose because we've lost so much. No. Who cares about the statistics? I care what God thinks of me. Let me say that. I, I care what God thinks of me. He said, if you lose your life, and this is where the rubber meets the road. He said that if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. Losing your life for the sake of Christ. Losing for Christ. Losing. Lost. Losing. What is that? What is it? Let me hit home with someone. When's the last time you've been lost in the presence of God? When's the last time you've been lost in your prayer closet? Where when you come to, you forgot where the door handle was. How long you've been, how long has it been since you've been lost in the Word of God? But I keep failing and falling in sin. Hang on now. If you lose yourself in the word of God, David said, Lord, it's your word that I have, I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Psalms 119 verse 11. It's his word that we hide in our heart. We can't lose if we have a prayer life. Amen. Try it sometimes. You can't lose if you have a prayer life. Because when you have a prayer life, that means you're communicating with God Almighty. And He's for us. You know what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 31? If God be for us, He's more than all that could be against us. He's for us. Even in life, when we think that we're losing, He's for us. Oh, hallelujah. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. That means if I'm losing, I still can serve him. I still can love him. I still can be faithful to him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You've got to be persuaded personally. Now, Brother Pete South, I don't know what it's like. I don't have the patience. Now, if it was a 1963 Corvette split window with a 427, you know what I mean? Kind of the, the silver metallic paint on it. I might have the patience for it. Just to, just to bring back to life a lug nut that's rusted. The rest of the car could be completed. I'd have the patience to just sand that little lug nut down 
and make sure it's staying really good and put it back on so it matches the rest of the car. Brother Pete South, he just recently retired. And I, I don't know when, sorry for putting you on the spot here. Is this okay? Okay. Brother Paul South, they, they do a lot of body work and, uh, and painting and stuff. Not for saints, not for church people, but uh, <laughs> see how quickly I got, got them out of that? Because some of you are all like, well, who the hell? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but they've, they've done work on all the classic cars for Ray Skillman. All of them. And Brother Pete South, he thinks he's wasting his time with me showing me these pictures of these cars, the before and after pictures. It's easy to see a before picture and then hit the, hit the screen on the phone and see the after picture. It's like, wow, that was quick. You've done that really fast. I thought, oh, no. Like one of them, it took him seven months to take everything apart, nuts, bolts, everything. Because if you're going to restore something, you can't just restore just, you know, just a dipstick and just a tire or a rim. You bring everything back to its original state. So you take it all the way down to the frame. You send the frame out to be dipped, do whatever, bring it back to Brother Pete South. And Brother Pete South is the one that oversees everything to being done on it, painting and all that and putting it back, assembling it back together to bring it back to its original state. If not... On the title work, it will put, be put salvaged. Or a, someone say re rebuilt? Some, did someone say rebuilt title? Yeah. You're stamped. You're labeled. It's been labeled. It drops the value of the vehicle. So when God found us because we didn't find him, we're still in the restoration business. Oh, I could really preach right now. Such were some of us when God found us. We were rusted all over from the inside out. But when God got a hold of us, he said, I'm going to restore all the years. That's why you think, well, well, if they come in here when they're 50, 60, 70 years old, then they'll serve God. But they're, they're going to be out for a little bit. No, God could take a drug addict and bring them in and restore the years that the drugs has eaten up their brain. When he brings them back, he brings it back to his original state. Not for our glory. But for his glory. And he puts them on display and say, yep, yes, that, they were in the pig's pen. But look where they are today. I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't do that with a car. I couldn't do it with a car. And he has some nice pictures of cars he's done. And they're still in the museum today. And some of them. He has, Ray Skillman has sold them and they're shipped all across the country, different auctions. But I'm sure that he could see a picture of it or know about a car somewhere in a different auction. Meekum all. I don't auction, I can't even say the name without them charging me $1,000 just to say the name. But Meekum all auction, and Barrett Jackson, and he's, you know, I, I, th that's the car. That's the one I done. That right there, right there. Some of you think that you've lost and it's over with. And God said, no, no, no. I don't know where you are in the crowd, but I know where you are. Sometimes you think, oh, I don't see them here. God sees them. I know you. I remember where I brought you from. Look at them. They're still sitting on the front row. They should be out doing whatever they want. No, no, no. But I've restored them. So here they are in the house of God. He picks you up no matter where you go. He knows you. Come on now. When someone sees you in Walmart, that's one of mine right there. Yes, I've restored all the years that the sin had tried to destroy them. And life circumstances and situations. But look at them shining bright for me. Because you're a city that sat on the hill cannot be hid. Because when God restores you, you don't have to sit in the molly grub saying, Well, I, I done this and I did this and I did. No, no, no. He forgets your past. Stop remembering how many times you've lost. And how many times you've fallen. God's restore you. And when God says you're restored, then you're restored. The problem is people say, well, how much, how much am I worth? What kind of value do you put on my life? No, it's not that. Because when that happens, when God restores you, now it's time for you to lose your life in order for you to find it. I'm going to close with this. How do you lose your life, Pastor? How do you lose it? With everything God's done for you, When's the last time you've invited someone to have a Bible study? When's the last time you've been on the phones 
inviting someone to the house of God or out to a lunch or to a dinner just to talk to them about the goodness of God. When's the last time I used pumping gas? Look over at the person pumping the gas on the other side, wiping the tears from their eyes because the gas price is so high. It's happened. I don't know about you, but it's happened. Someone go in to, in to put $15 in their tank and go out and only get two and a half gallons maybe. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get from here to there. And I said, listen, well, let, let, me, let me fill your tank up. Someone said, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. I'd help someone out tonight if you needed help because God's been good to me. I'm not the richest man in the world. My wife is, but I'm not the richest man in the world. <laughs> you know I'm just kidding. But God's blessed me to bless others. Come on now. Amen. Hang on now. Did he say he's going to restore all the years? We tend to look on the things that we've lost in life and how much money we're losing because of the gas prices. He owns it all. Okay, well, you mean to go somewhere right now? David said, I was young. Now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. But you have to, there's a, there's a key word in there. The righteous. He's never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Jesus pinned in Matthew chapter, he said these words in Matthew penned them in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be what? Added, not stretched, added. Do you believe God can stretch the fuel in your vehicle? It doesn't have to be a diesel Cummings. Come on now. Come on now. Somebody says, I just can't afford to do this. I can't afford. No, no, no. We serve a God that owns everything. When he said, I'm going to restore, that means he's going to restore. But you have to seek his kingdom of God first and his righteousness. That means that means that the carnal man has to lose some things in this life in order to gain spiritual things. And that spiritual thing is, is called faith. Can you say amen? amen? Come on now. To seek his kingdom first. People post stuff on social media. Babe, let's get a song. People post stuff on social media quite often about, oh, they're doing this to us, they're doing that to us, and just we're losing, we're losing. It's all about losing. We read it. I mean, it's, it's, I mean today it's, it's, it's the oil, it's, it's the lumber, it's the copper, it's the gold, it's the silver. It's, you, know, you begin to think about everything that, that, that's just scarce in life, and, and you, you, you begin to, to, to engulf that. You begin to consume that with the mind because you're reading it. You think, oh, my goodness, and you, all of a sudden you're feeling like, I better just go in my closet and just stay because something bad can happen. We're the children of God. If there's ever a time to stand up for Christ and have faith, it's this day that we're living in. Can you say amen? But you, but you and I, we have to be personally persuaded that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nakedness, sword, uh, peril, uh, Famine, clothes, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. If we lose everything in this life, we'll gain everything in the next life. You've got to endure. I, I didn't get into this. Some of you are probably already ahead of me. But Job, look what Job lost. Job lost quite a bit. Not over a period of years, keep in mind. The messengers, they were rude. They wouldn't let the messenger before even finish. And yet another messenger came in. How many ever been that way in life? The phone call or you get the mail and, and you think that your, your stimulus check is going to be there. And, and all of a sudden you see a stimulus check, you smile real big. But underneath there is five envelopes this big with windows in it. Saying do, past notice. Come on, come on now. Come on now. That's over a period of time. Job lost everything in a single day. Really, we can almost dwindle it down to almost an hour of everything he lost. But then he said, Though he slay me, though he slay me, who was he talking about? Because people think he was talking about Satan. Satan couldn't slay him. 
God told him, you can do anything you want to with the material things. But you cannot touch his soul. You can even touch his physical body, but you can't touch his soul. It's mine. Because I know when the day's all said and done, Job's going to say, okay, what I've lost, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. And that's it? No. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And though these skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself and not another. And he said, though he slay me, he was talking about Christ because he knew that there was a hedge round about him. And God removed the hedge. Sometimes God does it in our life to see what we're really made of. It's basic training. I say that kind of easily. Because life is basic training. It doesn't, it's no respect to persons. Your Michelin tires, my Michelin tires, your Firestone tires, kaboom, my Firestone tires, kaboom. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because it happens to me. I have a water heater at home that's went out before. I've had to replace it. But yours might not have went out yet. Notice I said, yeah, but when that time comes, what are you going to do? God, why did you allow this to happen? You control the winds in your fist and you begin, no, it's just life. It's not that you lost, it's just to, to help you learn some things. Come on now. Shall we stand? Oh, hallelujah. Personally persuaded. Personally. Because you failed at one thing doesn't mean you can't try again doing it. I didn't bring a can with me. I wasn't even going to go this direction, but I'm going to now because I just used something the other day. WD-40. You want to know what WD-40 is? Ladies, please don't raise your hands. I need to speak to your spouses. My goodness. You know what WD-40, you know what it means? It's water detectant. Yeah. 40 tries. 40 tries. If he had stopped at 39, it would have been WD-39 because he'd have quit. If he just stopped, he just, I'm tired of trying. But he kept doing it. Now it's sold in every store. Every store. And it works good. Do I have any witnesses that WD-40 works good? You know, the squeaky hinges on the doors and, you know, and you, you know, spray them in your locks if they still have them with keys. If you're vehicles, my dad taught me that a long time ago because it, they won't freeze if you spray with WD-40. Some of you probably didn't know that, but it, it, it happens. How many times have God tried you yet? Peter said, consider not the fiery trials, which are to, which are to, that means it's a sure thing, it's going to happen. Consider not strange. Don't even take a thought, just endure it. Because he that endures unto what? How many knows your end? Job said, he knows the beginning of my days and the ending of my days. He just wants to know if we're willing to endure. Quit comparing your wins to your losses. Give God a hand clap of praise. Give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Don't you love the Lord? He's on your side. He's fighting for you. He wants to bless you. I love the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name, but not from the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Saints of God, please greet our guests that are here except for Avery Elder. They might have already stepped out. Amen. Protect our babies, our new babies. God bless you. We love every one of you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name, but not from the presence of the Lord. We'll see you all, Lord willing, if he shall tarry, Saturday, 5 p.m. for prayer. God bless you.